Hey guys, I wanted to share with you the new Nespresso Creatista Plus by Breville. I just happened to come across this in a Nespresso newsletter that was sent out this past week and uh, did a little search in online to try to find the machine and uh, found out that it was just being rolled out into the US. Um, it's been for sale in Australia where Breville is based and I could not locate any of the machines in the US Checked Amazon, checked um, uh, Sir Latab Williams Sonoma. Um, did find that Amazon uh, Canada uh, had them uh, for sale, but they were out of stock, and there were about eight reviews on Amazon Canada. So over the week, I kept checking and noticed that Bloomingdale's um, was offering them on their website, but they were out of stock. Williams Sonoma began offering them on their website, but they were on back order until about November eighth. And Sir Latab said that they had them in stock and their website allows for a uh, store search and they actually had them available um, in local stores in my area. So I was excited uh, about the announcement of uh, the Nespresso Creatista Plus by Breville. Um, I currently am a Breville fan and have the Breville Oracle. Um, I also have and use a Breville dual boiler uh, at work and absolutely love the machine. Um, the one thing that I don't love about it uh, is when I'm in a rush uh, in the morning, um, my coffee beans, if I have not used my coffee machine in a while, then obviously the coffee goes bad and uh, you need to trash all the beans that you have and start from scratch. Um, and that's where the pod system from Nespresso is great. Uh, when you're in a hurry, uh, the pods are, are sealed, and they're fresh and they're ready to go. Um, if you're not familiar with the Oracle, the Oracle has a built-in uh, bean grinder um, and also has an automatic um, frothing wand. And it will automatically uh, sense uh, the heat uh, or the temperature of the milk uh, depending on how you set it. And uh, based on your steaming and frothing settings will automatically stop um, the milk once it reaches that point. Um, I tend to like my milk at about 107 or 160. There, the machine's finally heated up. 160 degrees when I make a latte. I'm a latte person, um, so usually uh, leaving for work in the morning, I always make a latte. Um, and that is uh, the one feature that is uh, impossible to find when you start looking at capsule systems like Nespresso. Um, the Arachino it does a, an okay job, but using the Arachino whisk inside um, never compares to actually having fully steamed milk. Uh, the Arochino also does not get it to 160 degrees. I think it gets it to about 140 or so, which is warm in my opinion. Uh, I prefer a hot latte. Um, may not be the official correct way that the uh, Europeaners make a latte, but uh, my preference is def uh, definitely hotter than 140 degrees. So going back to the Creatista Plus, when I saw that this had the same or very similar um, frothing wand um, like the Oracle and combined an automatic frothing wand with the single dispense um, feature of uh, Nespresso capsules, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to try out the machine. Um, it's interesting, the frothing wand, you can program how hot uh, you want the milk to be anywhere from 133 degrees up to about 166 degrees. Um, so definitely a, a great feature there. Um, the machine, um, while we've been talking, the, the Oracle had been heating up. It is a dual boiler machine. There's a lot more going on in, in that um, machine than there is uh, in the Creatista. I'm sure this is just a thermoblock machine. Um, but it's great because it takes three seconds to heat up. Show you the machine a little bit. I already obviously unboxed it. I was a little excited, but um, typical Nespresso box that the machine comes in, uh, 19 bar pressure, three seconds to heat up, uh, the assisted clean system uh, for the steam wand. Uh, this is all in stainless steel. Of course, your Grand Crew selection. It comes with your um, standard set of Grand Crew um, to test, or sample pack, I should say. Again, another... Uh, uh, an image there. Um, it does come with a Breville frothing um, pitcher, which is great. Uh, so the machine itself, again, uh, if you're not fami familiar with Breville, um, 
the machine is extremely rugged, all stainless steel, um, has some great heft to it. Um, you've got a great milk tank on, or water tank on the back. Um, I don't have the actual capacity on me, but it does hold a significant amount of water. It could very easily be 64, 72 plus ounces. I have to check on that. Um, the machine, you've got a drip tray that detaches down here. You have the little uh, red warning bob that will pop up when the drip tray is uh, full. Couldn't figure out what in the heck this thing was for. Um, the Oracle doesn't have that near the steam one. Um, the Oracle senses the temperature with li this little probe of the milk, and that's how it knows as it's uh, uh, steaming the milk um, where it's at. So this Panarillo, uh, a little different. There is no probe down here. So looking at the instructions, it's interesting that this little probe is what actually senses the temperature on the bottom of the milk jug based on uh, the settings that you program in for how uh, hot you'd like your milk. Um, you've got excellent width or height here for um, a cup. Travel mugs, we're gonna start running into issues. Here's a, a typical, about a 12 inch, a 12 inch latte cup. And I apologize, my sinuses are acting up and uh, so some of my words are coming out a little goofy. Uh, for smaller espresso, ristretto cups, you've got a, a nice little tray here. And then all of your um, capsules are behind. And again, if you notice, everything operates with a, a simple push and it snaps back into place, again push, snaps back into place. Uh, a nice metal Nespresso lever here. And on the top, you've got a screen, you have start, cancel button, and a select button. Go ahead and turn the machine on. A nice welcome screen, and you're ready to go already. So, um, several settings in here. Now I've already gone through the user setup, which is pretty simple. It has you tests, or it has you test for uh, water hardness. Um, Breville provides you with a, a water hardness strip. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. It takes only 60 seconds to test for water hardness, and all that's going to do once you program into the machine what the water hardness is. It will help you, um, or the machine will auto prompt you uh, when it's ready to be descaled and cleaned. So once you go through that and pick your language, then you're ready to go. So starting at the very beginning of the menu, depending on the beverage that you would like to make, um, it starts off with the ristretto, and that's about 0.85 ounces, uh, the ristretto. Now if you hit the selector button here, it will allow you to change the volume. Going back to default, espresso, it automatically defaults to about 1.35 of an ounce for espresso. You have Lungo, Flat White. Now here you start getting into your milk-based beverages. So if you select that, you can select your milk, uh, you can select your coffee volume, next your milk temp, um, and it took me a while to figure this out because it's confusing. It says milk froth up top and setting one, wasn't sure what that meant. But if you select that, you can actually change that all the way up to setting eight, back down to the standard setting one. And you'll see as you're changing it, it'll give you this little white dotted line so you know where your standard baseline was. Moving on, you have cafe latte with your same settings down below. You've got a cappuccino, latte macchiato. Then you have just milk settings, steam purge for your wand, maintenance settings, and then general settings. So the one thing I really wanted to highlight on this uh, intro video was any of these mi milk based drinks, I'll do uh, a latte since that's what I typically drink, compared to the Oracle, which as you're selecting um, how much uh, foam you'd like, uh, more foam, cappuccino, this little arrow you would change it, or uh, less foam, more steamed milk for latte, you can select that. Uh, again, you can also select the temperature. So I was kind of expecting the exact same thing on the Creatista Plus. Um, unfortunately, when you're changing milk temperature, 
Oh, I just realized that. That's nice. Cool. So no heat. But when you're changing milk temperature, you go from warm to ideal to hot. Turn it again, very hot. I turn it again, very hot. Turn it again, still very hot. Turn it again, very hot. There is absolutely nothing in the manual or here on the screen that tells you what the temperature is. So there's no way to know, am I 160 degrees at ideal? Am I 100? Well, we know at very hot, the max temp is about 160, I think it's about 166. So that's 166. So I could assume going down one notch is 160, but I don't know what the increments are as you continue to go down. Same thing with milk. We'll pick ideal, go back into milk. Um, I don't know, setting eight is gonna be max foam and setting one, I'm gonna assume is uh, just steamed milk. So somewhere in the middle. This one you're gonna have to definitely play with um, to figure out how much it's foaming um, and steaming. But I think I'm most bothered by the uh, temperature milk. I would have really loved to have seen um, the temperatures on here. Um, besides that, everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to brew anything just yet, um, but it is interesting if I select a latte and leave all the settings standard and then hit start. What it would do first is actually brew um, the Nespresso pod and then your Nespresso is going to sit in the glass and then it will tell you it's done and then you have to push start again and it will begin uh, your milk. Whereas I would prefer to have the milk steamed first, followed by the shot second, just because the shot is sitting there and getting cool while you're waiting about a minute to a minute and a half for your milk to steam, depending on how much milk you have uh, in there and how hot you make it. Uh, of course, those times are all going to change. Um, so you can get around that by getting out of the menu here and simply just selecting milk. So you can start the milk first, and then you'll have to manually scroll over to whatever shot you want to pull, be it a ristretto uh, or an espresso or a lungo shot for your milk-based drink. Um, so, so far, those are my two uh, main takeaways of the machine as far as usability. Um, but they are absolutely, uh, or it's a, a fantastic machine so far for what it is. Um, it's retailing in stores right now for $5.99. I think MSRP is about $8.99, sorry about that. Um, so $5.99, William Sonoma, Sir Latab. Um, Oracle runs about uh, $19.99. Um, so again, these are two completely different machines, but what, what I'm looking forward to in the Createsta Plus is the consistency with the capsules. And I think once I can figure out um, the best or ideal uh, milk temperature and um, uh, milk frothing, um, settings will be good to go uh, and it should make for a, a pretty straightforward and easy uh, routine in the morning for making my latte. Um, I'll definitely follow up with um, a video to show an actual um, uh, steaming of the milk and a pool of espresso. Um, definitely feel free to uh, leave any comments below, ask any questions. Uh, again, super excited that this machine is out and available and uh, look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Take care.